Hey guys, good morning, welcome back. Today we're gonna to start a totally new chapter all about solving differential equations, which sounds like it's a really difficult thing, but it's actually very, very easy. Okay, we'll get there in a second. So before we do that, I would like you to either in your notes or in your head, find the derivative, going back to derivatives, find the derivative of all of these. So hopefully you can see that all of these derivatives are the same. They're all 2x, and I did that on purpose because today's assignment is going to be working these backwards, which we've done before. We just never gave it this name of solving a differential equation. Well, a differential equation is very easy. All it means is it's an equation that has a derivative in it. So this is a differential equation. When you solve a differential equation, you'll have to know that terminology. When you solve a differential equation, it's that process of integrating and going back to this. So if I gave you this as the problem and I said, solve the differential equation, then that would just mean integrate both sides and you get y equals x squared plus c because you don't know which one of these it is, okay? This is also called the general solution to the differential equation. The general solution to a differential equation, okay? It's general because we have the plus c. We don't know which of these specific equations. Now, if I then say I want the particular solution, then they'd have to give me more information. They'd have to give me a point, x and y, so that I know which specific parabola we're looking for, okay? So you know how to do this math already, but what you wanna focus on today is the way they ask the question. Okay, so look, look at the terminology. So when it says solve the differential equation, that just means integrate, okay? So this is a differential equation because it has a derivative in it. When you solve it is when you get, the, this is the general solution, okay? Now let's do the particular solution. To get the particular solution, they would have to tell me a point. They might say, um, it goes through the point, oh, I don't know, one, four. Well, if you know that, then you can solve for C. So for this one, if I said X is one and Y is four, then C would have to equal three. And you plug it back in and you'd get Y equals X squared plus three. This would be the particular solution, okay? General solution, particular solution to the differential equation. Okay, that's the terminology we're working on here. Okay, let's do another one. Refresh your memory on all of your derivatives and antiderivatives, okay? So first of all, this is sometimes how they give you that point. This just means it goes through the point one, three. No big deal, okay? Find the particular solution. That means integrate both sides. So we get y equals. The integral of the right side, this is the natural log. So five natural log of x plus c. Okay, that is your general solution. Now plug in one and three to get your specific solution. I'm gonna let x equal one and y equal three. Okay, and the natural log of one you're supposed to know. Remember your natural log graph, it's the inverse of exponential growth. And most people remember that anything to the zero power is one. So zero one is exponential growth, that's zero one. If you remember that the log, the natural log is the inverse of it, then it goes to the point one zero, okay? So this is one zero. What does that tell you? The natural log of one is zero. So right here, the natural log of one is zero, and that means that C had to be three. Now you can't just leave it C equals three. That's not the answer. You have to make sure you go back and plug it back in. So Y equals five natural log of X plus three. That's the solution to this differential equation. Okay, easy enough. Just got to get back into the groove of doing your derivatives and integrals. Okay, now this one I chose on purpose. Look how similar this original problem looks to that last one. The difference is that last one was an x to the first. If it's anything other than an x to the first, and if it's an x squared or anything else, then it's just a power rule, okay? So move it up, rewrite it as 5x to the negative 2, and just do a simple power rule. Okay, integrate both sides, and you get y equals 5x to the 
add one and you get negative one and divide by that result. Plus C, very important now. Now it really matters, okay? Pretty it up a little bit. This will be a negative five and this will go back to the bottom over X, okay? That's my general solution. Now find the particular solution. Plug in the point three comma one eighteenth. Okay, so plugging in when x is three. Okay, I plugged in that x was three and y is one eighteenth. Gonna add five thirds, so it's one eighteenth plus five thirds. Well, that's pleasant, not. Nah, not so bad. Okay, get my common denominator, make them both eighteenths. So times six. So it's one eighteenth plus 30 over 18. So we get 31 eighteenths for C. And again, remember, that's not the answer. The answer is what you get when you plug it back in over here. So my final answer would be Y equals negative five over X plus 31 eighteenths. Yup, that's what it is. Okay, so that's the main idea. I swear it's not difficult. You just might be a little bit rusty with your derivatives and antiderivatives. Okay, good luck guys. Hope you do well. You got this. By the way, sorry I didn't grade your tests over spring break. Completely forgot. I'll try to get them to do it today. Have a good one.